In today's tutorial we'll be creating this 3D card reveal using Element 3D within After Effects. Now it's a pretty simple effect to set up and I'm gonna show you how to model the card, add textures and a bunch of effects. Let's get into it. So I'll start off by creating my background here, make it black, let's duplicate this layer and we'll call this element. I will also create a camera here, hit OK. And I've got this texture of a card here which I'm gonna be using so I'm gonna scale this down. Let's pre-compose this, we'll call this card, hit OK. And I'm gonna go into Layer, Auto Trace, and make sure my channel is set to Alpha here, and hit OK, and that basically creates a mask around our image. Let's hide this, and we'll drop it below here. Let's add element to this layer, and we can start modeling our card. So I'll go into Custom Layers, and let's select it under Layer 1, and also under Custom Texture Maps here. Let's go into element and we can hit extrude. So now we've got our card model here. Let's scale this down a bit. And under my texture here, I'll go into the bevel and let's set the extrusion to something like 0.01. .01. We don't want this to be thick since this is a card. And if we go down here under the diffuse channel, we can set the texture to our custom layer one here and we'll see the card appear. Now, in order to fix the texture to be in place, we're gonna go ahead and select Use Layer as UV, and that puts it in place. Now, if we zoom in here, you can see we're getting some rough edges on our texture. So a quick and easy fix here is we go into our card pre-comp here, and since the outline here is white, I'm just gonna go and create a white solid, and I'll drop it below our card. And if we go back into Element now, and quite easily, you can see the issue is resolved just like that. All right, let's zoom out here and I'll create a new duplicate. Let's rename this one to back. And this one will be our front. So right now I'm just gonna have the same texture for both of them. I'm just gonna move the front one a bit forward here, like so, and let's hit okay. So now we've got our card 3D model here. We can go ahead and spin it around just like that. But I do wanna have two separate textures. So an easy way to do this, we'll go into the card composition and I'll just save this as an image. So I'm using effects console, but if you don't have that, you simply go into composition, save frame as, and just render an image. Now, since we have this image saved, we can use this composition for something else. So I've got this footage here of this time-lapse and I'm just gonna scale it down to fit into our card and drop it below here and make it a luma mat to the card layer. So now anything that is inside here is gonna be displayed on our model. We can go ahead and disable the white solid here. And if we go into element, you can see we've updated the card with this cool texture. Now let's go into element and make sure we change the back texture as well. So in element, you can see we have the same texture for our back layer. And in order to change this, we'll go into the back layer here, right click the material, duplicate and replace. So now if I change here to the image we exported, it should look something like this. And as you can see, it stays in place and everything seems all right. We can obviously change the color or the saturation here, whatever you wanna do and import a different texture maybe. So this is completely up to you. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And let's start animating this card. So let's set a keyframe on one second mark here for my X, Y, Z rotation and my Z position. Let's hit U to bring these up and I'll just move it back here, give it some Y rotation, mostly on the Y axis, maybe a bit of an X and Z here as well. And we're getting this sort of a spin in reveal. Okay, let's select those keyframes, hit F9, and I'll be creating a graph like so, just to give this a smooth motion. All right, now I wanna create some continuous movement on my rotation. So I'll go into my particle loop here, and under particle rotation, let's set a position for when it stops. And I'll show you what I mean here. So if I position this to start off from this position, I'll set a keyframe on my new rotation here. And let's go to about three seconds here and just have it spin like so. All right, just a bit more movement here. And if I play this back, you can see we're getting this continuous type of movement. I can also add some camera zoom in to go slowly so it looks even better like so all right now this is pretty cool but i do want to add some twist to the card when it reveals so once the card comes in it will have this sort of a twist effect 
And to do this, we'll go into element here under group one and under the form, we'll enable our twist. And if we twist the Y, you can see we're twisting the card. Let's set a keyframe here for the twist to be at zero. And at the beginning, let's give it a bit of a twist here. Now you can see we're getting some really strange artifacts and it doesn't look too good. And that is because our card model has low polygons. So if I go back into element and change this to wireframe, you can see that we have no polygons in the middle at all. So since we used a mask to build this, we can simply go into one of the layers here. And if we scroll down to surface option, we've got something called subdivision level. So if we change this to two, for example, you can see we're getting some polygons in the middle and maybe increase this to something like four. Okay, this might be a little too much, but it will make it smoother. And I'll do the same for my front layer. So subdivision lever set to four. And you can see that instantly makes it smooth because there is a lot more geometry to work with in the model. So I'll just go ahead and match these two keyframes to our previous graph. So something like this. And if we play this back, we've got this cool twisting animation. Now you might get some flickering and that is because our two models are colliding. So in order to fix this, let's go back into element here. I'll set it back to shaded and I'll just move it a bit more here on the Z axis. Now we can see it's fixed the issue. So let me just go ahead and enable motion blur here so it's smoother. So here I'll set it to on and as you can see, this works quite well. Now there's obviously a lot of things you can do to composite this. So for example, if I go into my card layer here, let me duplicate the texture and I can go ahead and maybe add a luma key here and we can key out the darker areas. So we only have the white texture and maybe create a mask here just to isolate the outline. So I just got this outline here and I can go ahead and maybe decrease the opacity and have it on top of my video. And since we have it in this composition, it's going to update it automatically. Now at the beginning of the video, I had some additional glowing elements here. So basically I've just duplicated the element layer. And if I go into my scene setup here, I can go into my bevel one and we'll just enable the illumination here. Make sure we use the fuse color just a bit. And once I scroll down here under my output, I'll just change the composite to illumination. So I've just got the texture here and I can add an effect called radial fast blur. And if we change this to brightest and increase the amount, we're basically getting this type of streaks here. Maybe if I disable this frame here, I'm just gonna get the details from the stars and that looks kind of cool. And I can just set this layer to additive. All right, this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.